emergency. Today on Rescue 911. A drainage pipe sucks a boy closer to death. Keep hollering, help me, help me, please don't let me die. On Rescue 911. On July 12, 1994, a violent rainstorm passed through Eunice, Louisiana. Although the rains brought some obvious problems, Colleen Gustin assumed, having lived in the area most of her life, that when the skies cleared, it would be safe for her son and his friend to go out and play. It was really some of the worst rain that we've seen here in years. The water was three, four feet on the highway in front of our house. It was something. The boys were pretty much confined to indoors all day. The afternoon when the rain did stop, they asked to go outside and play. I thought it was safe because the water really had receded some. And don't be too long. Cool, look up. Eleven-year-old Thomas Lemoyne had come over to the house of his best friend, Adam Gustin. Thomas, he's fun to play with, and he's funny, and he's my friend. We put our boots on, and then we went outside, and we just we were talking, and we didn't really look at where we were going. We seen this ditch that was full of water. I jumped in it. And then it went a little over my, my nose. Probably over my head. Oh, this one. We uh, found a pipe to the other side of the ditch. And we went and walked across the pipe. It was moving fast. Eunice police officer John Cormier was on routine patrol in the area. I was watching the water, you know, waiting for it to recede so I can pull up my barricades on the highway. I saw two young boys playing in the water. It's a natural curiosity. Everybody likes to play in water, but it's too dangerous. All right, Barb, you need to get out of the water and go home before somebody gets hurt. I don't want to catch y'all in here again. The policeman told us to get away from the ditch, and we walked away. They got 15, 20 yards from me, and I went on westbound. I decided I needed a cup of coffee. Thomas said, wait for me. I'm going to cross the pipe one more time. I thought he was faking at first. All you could see was his head. I just grabbed him before he went in the fight. He was going under. I felt that I didn't want to let him go. So I just screamed, help. We're best friends. We are into our clothes. And our car. And jazz. We are honor students. And twins. We are diabetics. We test 10 times a day. Because this is our meter. Because it's so not a pain to use. The AccuCheck Compact System eases pain others cause. A 17-strip drum takes the pain out of struggling with strips. You can also test on your palm instead of your sensitive fingers. We say, see you later, pain. <laughs> Switch to the AccuCheck Compact System. Less painful from start to finish.
Johnny McGee happened to be going by on his way home. When I passed, I seen a little kid caught my eye. And when I turned back and just glimpsed at him, all I seen was a head sticking up out the water. Mark Edwards was running an errand across the street. I hear a kid screaming for help. The guy that was standing up on the ground was screaming, please, somebody come help my friend drowning. I started trying to pull him out, and it's like he wasn't even budging. It's like something had him down there and wasn't going to turn him loose. Off-duty police officer Ronald Papillon also happened to be across the street. His face was just so white, and he just kept hollering, kept hollering, help me, help me, please don't let me die, please don't let me die. I said, this ain't working, that pulling ain't working. I said, something's wrong, this guy's stuck, and he's not coming out. Somebody was down there pulling his legs in. I'm trying to pull him out. You know? The current was strong. The way it had him, he couldn't move. I was scared myself. Definitely wanted to drown within arm reach of him. If we made a mistake and slipped up, he was gone. The suction and the current would have took him through the pipes. You looking at uh, almost a mile underneath through the pipe. Try and pull the thing. All right, good. I got it. If he would have went down the pipe before he got to that big canal, he would have been dead. I was real scared. We got you. But it seemed like the water was rising because he kept pushing his head over the water so, you know, the water wouldn't get in his nose. The little fellow was, he was determined he was going to hang on, you know, he wasn't going down, and I was determined I was going to get him out. And finally, it's like it was just broke suction. I didn't realize how bad the suction was till after we got him out. When we pulled him out, it's like we unclogged the drain. But look, Johnny's stopping it back up, you know, it stuck me up to it. And I, oh, no way. After more than 15 minutes of fighting to keep his head above water, Thomas was safely out of the pipe. His mother, Rachel Lemoyne, rushed to the scene as soon as she heard what had happened. I expected the worst. I ran to the ambulance and saw him sitting there and, uh, you know, wet and dirty with a little oxygen mask, and I was just so relieved. So relieved. Adam's mother, Colleen, had also been notified. Thomas looked bad. My heart went to my feet, but everybody reassured me, you know, that it was okay, that they were, you know, very, very lucky. Six months later, Thomas still remembers the day vividly. I was saying, please help me, please help me to get out. And then he pulled me out, and I said, thank you very much, I love you. They knew that, you know, they had done wrong, number one, leaving the yard where they would have been safe, and number two, not listening to the police officer. One of the things I like about Thomas and Adam's friendship is Adam's kind of clear-headed. I think other kids might have panicked, they might have left to go get help, but Adam had the presence of mind to stay there and help. And I'll always be grateful to him for that. Adam is my hero. I guess I can call myself a hero because I, I didn't let go of him until help came. But I'm not the only hero. The gentleman that pulled pulled Thomas out, they didn't stop to think, well, can we do this? You know, what might happen to us? They just jumped in. I think they're just terrific. I don't feel like I've ever thanked them appropriately or can. We're gonna feed him, we're gonna fatten him up. I'm just doing what anybody else would have done. Hopefully, anybody else would have done. It feels like it never happened. I feel good, I just, I play around in the neighborhood now. I don't ride in the ditches no more. This is might be fun to play in, but 
that could be dangerous. So you need to stay away from it. It's maybe a little bit smarter because dangerous things can happen when you never expect it. I think Thomas will always be my friend. <laughs> Step out of the car, please.